Some of y'all may be familiar with the website called KeepTradeCut.com. The great thing about Dynasty, Dynasty Fantasy Football, and rookie drafts and things like that is it's becoming more popularized. So you're getting more content about it. Terrible thing about it is that it's just starting to become popularized. So there's not a lot of central information sources. There's not like a go-to rankings or ADP or website for information or anything like that. It's still very much wild, wild west, up for grabs, find what you can. There's there's very little free resources or tools that you can use in Dynasty or Rookie landscape, and Keep Trade Cut is one of them. They are one of, like, I would say, breakout websites over the last year or two as it relates to Dynasty and Rookie rankings. If you've never checked them out, I'm going to link them down below. And what we're doing in today's video, they just dropped their rookie rankings for this year. So it's not like a website run by people who do their own individual rankings. It is a crowdsourced website. I remember the first time I came across this website, I was kind of skeptical. I was like, I don't really take seriously crowdsourced things because I don't think people who do the input take it seriously. So it's going to be wild and kind of be all over the place. But they've done such a good job of keeping the actual input on their website to people that care about Dynasty and people that care about Dynasty are nuts. People that are looking at rookie draft stuff right now are nuts, right? You got two months until your rookie draft. They've done such a good job of centralizing their information that a lot of it is actually accurate. And it is a resource that I feel comfortable using in my videos all the time now. When it first started out, you know, I wanted to give it some time to simmer and marinate and really figure out whether or not this was a good resource to trust. But because we have a lack of resources in the industry as a whole, that are free and available for everybody to use, right? Like I could use different paid resources, but then if you want to follow along, then you also got to pay in order to follow along. And we're not out here trying to gatekeep, okay? I'm trying to make sure all the dogs is eating. Even Zendaya, if you watch this, please DM me, answer my DMs. Keeptradecut.com, link down below. We're looking at their top 24 rookie rankings. So basically the way it works is you come onto their website and they immediately hit you with a prompt, but it's not like sign up for our newsletter. We're going to give you 10, 15% off our merch or some dumb shit like that. They give you three players and they tell you a setting. They say super flex dynasty half PPR. And they say, keep trade or cut. That's simple, right? And you pick one player that you'd like to keep, one player that you'd like to trade, one player that you would like to cut. And they basically crowdsource their rankings via that. And they have value numbers next to them and all that kind of good shit. And this is not, I'm not, I don't work with them. This is not an advertisement for them. I just like to open you guys up to new resources that I feel will benefit and help you. So if you're ever lost and you're like, I need like some sort of centralized, you know, database or some sort of centralized piece of information that will get my brain back to normality as it relates to rankings and all that kind of stuff. Keep Trade Cut is a phenomenal resource to do so. Not perfectly accurate. As you'll see, I'm basically going to be reacting to their top 24 rankings today that are crowdsourced by people that use the website. So there's a lot of data that goes into it. There are a lot of players. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen over the next couple of weeks that I'm assuming will move the numbers up on their website up and down. The more you guys go on it and the more you use it, the more accurate the player rankings and stuff will be. So for the time being, we're going to move over to the big screen. We're going to put my face down there over there somewhere before we do that you know we got to tuck the shirt in it's closest zendaya will ever get to being underneath my pants unfortunately you hate to see it let's move over to thy screen share Okay, so this is the website. Uh, the developers behind it are obviously very talented. They're skilled. This thing is very, very clean, easy to use, user-friendly. Every player has a value. You could see, you know, Dynasty Rookie Rankings, but you can go to just Dynasty Rankings overall. They have a trade calculator, which is also open-sourced to the crowd for the most part, but it's cool because you can put players in, and then it tells you, like, what you need to add in order to make the trade more valuable, etc. At the end of the day, all the rankings on any website are just some people behind it, so these are a little bit more numbers-based than people, but I think it's an, a nice second look uh, at the way you should feel, or at least relative to the market, how they feel about these players. So these are post combine rankings, but I don't know how much data they have in terms of user input, like up or down. Obviously on the right side, you could see here like Keishon Booty fell from the combine, right? Because he had a terrible combine performance. He came in undersized, but he still ranked pretty highly to the point where he's the 15th overall rookie player. And this is super flexes on, which is why you see the quarterbacks, you know, highly ranked. But I still think, you know, if someone were to re-rank players today, Keishon Booty might drop down to 18 or 20 or even like 23 or 24. So some of these I still think are probably lagging a little bit behind. But as you can see, the movement is starting to happen. And the more information they have on the website, the more accurate and clear this will be. You can see this little message from them up front. KTC's Dynasty Fantasy Football Rankings crowdsourced the current market value of players and picks from 
8,307,308 data points. Did I say that number right? And counting provided by users like you. Um, okay, sure. Whatever that means. So we can start it off. Uh, and they also have tiers, which is cool, right? So like Bijan is in its own tier. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I don't think anyone's really arguing with that at that point. Uh, Bijan's number one. He's in a tier of his own by a decently significant value point added. Uh, tier number two consists of CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jameer Gibbs and Anthony Richardson. And I could not agree more with that. You know, in terms of like the order of the players, I think CJ Stroud, as you could see, he jumped up two spots here after the combine. I think a lot of what's going to happen over the next week or two is CJ Stroud like dominated the combine from an accuracy standpoint. Everything about his throwing and everything about his on-field performance was glowing. So I think what's going to happen, and I really wouldn't be surprised if C.J. Stroud ended up being the number one pick in the draft this year. I, I think it's going to be very close between Young and Stroud. I really, in my heart of hearts, don't believe Richardson really has an actual chance to be the number one pick in the draft this year. I think there's a, uh, there are going to be a lot of teams that might think that Bryce Young has a better upside. But I think at the end of the day, if you're rebuilding a franchise, I think a GM or a head coach or whatever is just going to keep going back to the point of accuracy in their mind. And they're probably not going to overthink it like arm strength, athleticism, playmaking ability. At the end of the day, to lead your franchise and to lead an offense, the thing that pushes you forward the most is straight up an accurate quarterback, right? And I think GMs are going to continue to tell themselves that, which is why I think there's a really good chance Stroud ends up being the number one pick in the NFL draft. Whether or not you want to take him or Bryce Young will probably be the number two pick. You know, it's kind of up for grabs for you. Jackson Smith and Jigba. So this is interesting. And this is why I also feel like this might be a little bit delayed. Anthony Richardson down at six beneath JSN, beneath Jameer Gibbs. Uh, JSN was great in the agility drills, great in the gauntlet. So I think he clearly moved himself up to the wide receiver one in his class. Jameer Gibbs ran a 4-3-6-40, still came in at 199 pounds. I have my reservations about that. If he's the number five pick here, I would be taking Anthony Richardson over Jameer Gibbs, over Jackson Smith and Jigba. He would be my QB three. He would be my player four off the board. So I don't disagree with the tier altogether, but I do disagree with the player movement here and our rankings, our actually BDGE super flex as well as one quarterback rankings will be going live next week. We have the pre-order pricing available for our rookie draft guide available right now. That pricing, that discounted pricing will stop come early next week. Whenever this goes live, you can just go over to BDGE.co um, rookie draft guide pre-order 20 bucks instead of $25 that will go back up. We have in-depth rookie profiles on every single player that's fantasy relevant. Uh, rookie rankings, obviously, quarterback super flex, all positionally as well. And then uh, Noah's RB corner. So Noah uses a lot of data and stats, and I'm sure you guys love his videos. I, I do as well. He's one of the better creators in the space for sure. He uses a lot of stats that are like proprietary to him. This is the first time we've ever actually packaged him up and productized it and made it available to the public. So like bay rating, chunk rate, all these things that he uses that he's kind of made up in his own database, we are making it available to you guys in the rookie draft guide. And then uh, you guys can't see this, but here are the first edition of the rankings. And again, these will be available to everybody come Monday or whatever, but these will be changed in real time and you'll be able to see the actual changing of them as I do them in real time uh, on this chart here, which is a really cool feature that we added this year that I think you guys will enjoy. But anyways, uh, back to not pitching our products. I apologize. So we have Quentin Johnson, Will Levis, and Jordan Addison making up tier three. I think that makes sense. Quentin Johnson, I feel like, performed really well where Addison kind of uh, dropped the ball a little bit, figuratively, literally a little bit maybe, um, where he drops to the wide receiver three. He didn't have a great combine performance, so there's a chance he actually drops out of the first round of the NFL draft. Uh, if I had to bet, I wouldn't say that actually happens, but I think there's now a possibility where pre-combine, it felt like there was no chance that happened. Will Levis in his own tier, I still think Will Levis probably deserves to be off the board after Anthony Richardson. Here's the thing with A-Rich. I, I know there's been a lot of arguments about like A-Rich QB1, A-Rich not QB1. His upside is so high. Like how do you not to, even if he fails, like even if it's a 20% chance he hits, his upside is like league winning type stuff. I still hesitate to even agree with that at all. I have I have listened to so many podcasts and, and articles and watched videos on like combine recaps from people that were there and the best dudes in the game including a lot of content from, you know, Lance Erline and Dame Brugler and, and those types of guys. And I keep seeing the same thing from them. And it's like tweets like this. I have seen a lot of we knew Richardson would test well. This wasn't surprising. It's important to know that, yes, it was. It was not that he tested well, that he was tested as the most athletic quarterback in history. That matters and was not expected. 
yeah, but the level of athleticism isn't relevant since our assumption went from elite to a super elite. And this was the point I made in a video like earlier this week or last week where I was like, just because he was the most athletic quarterback of all time and we expect him to be like the fourth most athletic quarterback of all time, that shouldn't like that doesn't really change anything for me. And you could see him hitting against these points like that's not really an area of any concern. The area you want to see is improvement is working in zone accuracy on simple throws, better footwork and consistency from game to game. And there was this other thing. Uh, I don't know if the tweets are here. Okay, here it is. Yeah. It's here say, but in my opinion, the bigger thing is hearing that teams loved him in his interviews. It's a super athlete and common with brains, whatever. I did not hear that. He killed the interviews, heard all the QBs were just okay. in interviews doing a podcast now with Dane. And he said teams were surprised at how far behind he was from a football standpoint. It doesn't mean he can't develop into a great player, but this is the time of year where people hear and just say things that they want to hear. Like you start creating narratives that just simply aren't true for the sake of wasting space and time and breath and making content out of it. But when you get the right sources, you see and hear a lot of the, the things that are actually accurate. And that is one of them. Like Anthony Richardson killed his interviews like. No, he didn't. He was average at the interviews and teams were surprised by how far behind he was from a football standpoint. He had one year of starting quarterback uh, acumen or resume to go along with great athleticism and a lot of cool highlight plays, but a lot of awful play and a lot of bad mistakes and didn't will his team to victories. Like a lot of stuff that people compare him to the Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, the Cam Newtons, like those dudes broke their schools. Those dudes were breaking records. Those dudes were winning 11, 12, 13 games and, and leading their team to victories and championships. Okay. So this is not me saying I don't want Richardson, but this is me saying it's not black and white. We're like, you have to take Richardson because if he hits the upside is there, uh, you have to ask yourself, what are the chances that he does hit? And I think there's a very, very high chance you look back and be like, man, you could list all the things, right? We want to say, let's put Bryce Young next to a bunch of these 5'10 quarterbacks, right? And say all these 5'10 quarterbacks failed. Let's put Jameer Gibbs next to all the 199 pound running backs. All these ones failed. What if you just put Anthony Richardson next to all the athletic quarterbacks? Most of those guys failed too. Athleticism matters. But it gets to the point where it's like, okay, uh, same thing with like a wide receiver running back. Like, sure, it's really good to see a guy run a 4-4-1. If he runs a 4-2-5, does that actually matter? It's like being great is awesome. Being top one usually doesn't matter that much when it comes to athleticism. Sure, you're, you're an athlete and you're playing a game that requires athleticism. So the more athletic, the better, but it's a diminishing point of returns. It's like a bell cow curve. You guys know, you know, the fucking math behind that shit. It's like going up. It's like, yes, athletic, 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 running a 4-4-1, 4-4-0, 4-3-9. Yeah, you running a 4-3-2 does not make you a, a, a great football player. It, it might help in very, very minimal certain situations. You might be able to break a couple extra tackles or a couple extra runs or whatever, but Anthony Richardson is going to play quarterback. If he's not a good quarterback, he's not going to have longevity in this league. That's what it comes down to. And there are very real concerns with that. That is my final point on Anthony Richardson. Let's keep moving down to tier four. Zach Charbonnet is in a tier by himself. And I think that is probably the correct way to look at this running back class. He did really, really well at the combine. He came in very, very big, very, very ready to rumble catches passes i hope we start seeing some more nfl hype behind him like i hope he actually gets like draft capital where we can get excited about him otherwise it's all for not zach charbonnet the rb two three on this list in a tier of his own at pick number 10 michael mayer pick number 11 this is some sus ass shit he was i, I don't want to say he was a loser at the combine he probably did what most people expected him to do but every other tight end like so far outperformed what tight ends are expected to do michael mayer for me and probably nfl draft people are definitely he's definitely not in a tier of his own anymore when it comes to his rookie tight ends. I think it'll be a wild toss up between Mayer, Kincaid, Darnell Washington. I mean, you have Sam Laporta, even Will Mallory got into it, Luke Musgrave, you have Zach Koontz out of Old Dominion now, Penn State transfer. Like there are a lot of names, right? And I think the fact that this is so deep makes it even more questionable whether or not you want to take a guy like Michael Mayer early when you can get a Laporta in the second round. You can get one of these guys in the third round, etc. Um, so for a while, he was the clear tight end one. I just think that's so far from the truth. And this feels like a delayed ranking on their part. Like there's no way when rookie drafts actually come to fruition, like Darnell Washington is going to get round one capital because he is an extra blocker on your line as well as a really good athlete and a good pass catcher. So Mayer at 11 and Washington at 22 makes no sense. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they meet in the middle at like 14, 15. Um, so this one, I wholeheartedly disagree with as do I like most of the ones after this especially as uh, the running back situation downs at 13 and Zay Flowers at 12 uh, make up 
tier six along with Sean Tucker, Kayshawn Moody, Zach Evans, and Jalen Hyatt. That's interesting. I'm surprised Hyatt's all the way down here at 17. Sorry, I keep flashing the fucking rankings on you guys. You're probably having seizures and shit behind your screen. Zay Flowers performed well at his combine, came in at 182 pounds, ran a 4.42. Um, still small overall, still like short arms, so still very much probably going to play the slot, but I think he was a winner at the combine. So this makes sense. Josh Downs came in really undersized, 173 pounds, but he tested well, well enough where I think people are still excited about him. He looked really good on the field. So I think Flowers and Downs have been around this area and will continue to be borderline round one picks in rookie drafts. So a lot of this will get dictated by, I think, landing spot and draft capital. Like if Flowers gets into the first round and Josh Downs falls to the end of the second, early third round, that will probably be the separator, et cetera. But I still like both of those guys a lot. They're really, really close in ranking, as you can see. Tucker did not perform at the combine, so I'm kind of out on him at 14 here. He was not, he was never a guy that I was like really, really in love with. Um, I actually comped him. So in our rookie draft guy, we have a comp for every player as well. This is the meat of our of our draft guy. We basically have every fantasy relevant rookie. We have basically, and don't take this all the all the actual information on the page needs to get updated, but it will by the time you guys are on this bad boy. We have, you know, we have their ranks, obviously. We have their player comp, and I comped them to Donald Brown. I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember Donald Brown, but then once we, you know, once we get down to the actual meat of the rookie profiles, we watch film, we go into stats, uh, we have their combine analysis and all that kind of stuff for you guys to get a full painted picture of what each profile of every rookie looks like in depth, like really, really in depth. Donald Brown was a dude who like continues to make, he, he was not necessarily undersized. Uh, people had a lot of excitement about him. He was a dude who like continued to rip off monster plays in college. People were really excited about him in Indianapolis and he just never really stuck. And I got the same vibe from Sean Tucker as I did from Donald Brown. Uh, so I comped him to that. There's a comp for every player in our rookie draft guide. Kayshawn Booty, as I said, uh, Big loser at the combine. I think he'll continue to move down draft boards. Came in smaller than I thought he was going to be. Came in a little slower than I thought he was going to be. Also jumped 29 inches, which is like something I could literally, I'll do it fucking right now. You ready? Are y'all ready? I'm going to hit my head on the ceiling. If you hear a, if you hear a big crash, because I fucking nailed my head. Oh, oh, we tipped it. I felt it. I felt it. I just conked myself. I conked myself to prove to you that I'm more athletic than Kayshawn. Booty. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry, Keishon. You're probably a very good guy. I apologize. Uh, Zach Evans, we did not get to see him work out. He came into the combine, weighed in at 202 pounds, and then just didn't do anything. So we'll have to wait for uh, his pro day, I guess. Um, I do have a list of every college's pro day dates, and we will link that down below. It's like a Google Doc that someone on Twitter put together. So if you guys are interested, uh, I know Noah still likes Zach Evans a little bit, not as much as he liked pre-combine, obviously. He just made a video on his post-combine thoughts, which is up on the channel. He went off about Zach Evans and why it's all voodoo and, and witchcraft about why Zach Evans is not actually 202 pounds. And I just, we just, you know, <laughs> Tony was showing me like the timeline of him editing that video. And there's like, on Premiere Pro, you have, you know, all these time like audio, video, like third, second, fourth video screenshots and like graphs and stuff. And then there's just like a five minute piece where Tony's like, yeah, I didn't even touch this shit. He was like, he started going in on Zach Evans. And I was like, just let this man cook on the editing timeline. It's just like 50 different pieces. And then a five minute chunk where it's just untouched edit wise. He was like, you know what? He wanted to get some shit off his chest about Zach Evans. We let him run it. So uh, you can go check that out. If you give a fuck about Zach Evans, Jalen Hyatt, I'm surprised to see all the way down here at 17 uh, came in. He's, he's very slight lean frame. I, I, I still think there's a chance he gets into the back end of the first round, early second round capital. And depending on these guys are all like middle round running backs, most likely, right? Sean Tucker, Zach Evans, Tank Bigsby, Devon A. Chain, Kendra Miller. They can go anywhere from middle of the second round all the way to like round four or five. So depending on how many of those guys fall in the draft, there's a really, really high chance that Hyatt just jumps these guys just given draft capital. Tank Bigsby, he was all right at the combine. Nothing. Eh, I don't know. He, he was kind of exactly what I expected. So he starts off tier seven, him, Devon A. Chain, Kendra Miller, and Hendon Hooker. Uh, Tank would be the last guy in this tier for me, at least out of the running backs. Like Devonta Chain came in 188 pounds, ran a 4.32, so he came in heavier than I expected, and still ran his like elite 4.32 speed. So I'm I'm, I'm very much in on Devonta Chain if he's going to be 18th, 19th pick off the board. Kendra Miller, I absolutely love. Did not participate at the combine, but is for sure he will be my favorite value pick in in the entire rookie draft if he drops to pick number 20. If he's 20 in the rankings, I think he'll have a pretty good pro day. Uh, I hope he gets a draft capital. I hope he gets day two draft capital because I'll lose my shit if he does. If he doesn't, that becomes a little bit problematic. He might fall into that like Damian Pierce 
got fourth round draft capital, but I still like him enough that I want to pick him early. The only problem with him is like Pierce I loved because I didn't think he had a flaw in his game. I think even if Houston didn't use him in a pass catching capacity, everything about Damian Pierce's per touch numbers, even in the receiving game, were pretty pretty flawless at Florida. The same cannot be said for Kendra Miller. Mil- Miller does not have the pass catching upside, in my opinion, that Damian Pierce has, has not shown, but has. He was really, really good on third downs in college, where Kendra Miller was kind of irrelevant on third downs. So if he gets fourth round cap, fifth round cap, and I, I won't be as high as him on him as I was with Damian Pierce last year. Hendon Hooker will be the fifth quarterback off the board, most likely. Really intrigued to see where he goes. I hope he gets second round draft capital. I think he'll end up being, this is like exactly Jalen Hurts territory. Second round capital, random team, maybe a backup for a year or two, but you can get at the end of the second round in your super flex drafts and have him sit on your, you know, your taxi squad and feel fucking good about it. Darnell Washington, Dalton Kincaid, Rashi Rice wrap up the first 24 picks. Um, Washington obviously dominated the combine. He will continue to move up boards. Big, massive, I think it was 6'7", 265 or something like that. Ran a 4'6", 3 or 4'6", 4. Unbelievable weight adjusted speed score. Again, phenomenal blocker. So some team's going to draft him really, really early. And because he's such a good blocker, he'll probably stay on the field for every down. He was obviously statistically hampered because you got Brock Bowers, who's the tight end one in next year's class, running routes and, and doing all the fun stuff in the passing game. Washington was, you know, digging up dirt and doing the the grimy work. But that pays off when it comes to the NFL draft. The big wigs, no. Kincaid, my favorite pass catching tight end in this class, bar none. Um, I love this dude. If I can get him at the 211, 212. I'm ecstatic about it. I I do think a lot of these tight ends are going to end up jumping a lot of these mid-tier running backs because they're going to go in the third and fourth where a lot of tight ends will go in the first round. Top 50 pick. Rashi Rice is just not a guy I'm like a huge fan of. He performed fine at the combine. I don't know. He's he's like a, kind of feels like a one-trick pony in my opinion. Has a great body control, great catching ability, great like spectacular catch ability on the sidelines, like great, you know, hand skills, ball skills. But that kind of feels like all he does. He's not great running routes. He's He's kind of just like, he just is what he is as a receiver, but does that one thing well where I feel like he can be a role player for a team in that body type. But I'm not, I I don't feel like there's a ton of upside with Rashi Rice. After that, I mean, you guys can check out, this video is going to be the top 24 rankings and kind of just reacting to them. But you guys can go check out the rest of the rankings on keeptraycut.com. Again, I will link that down below. You have Musgrave, uh, Tajay Spears, which is really surprising outside of the top 24 picks. And then, you know, some running backs, some wide receivers, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, let me know what you think about these rankings. Let me know if you pre-ordered the rookie draft guide. I think we are opening up our dynasty leagues by the end of next week. And maybe I will raffle off a, a a couple spots in the dynasty league that I'm going to be a part of. We're going to do a startup within the office, raffle off a couple spots to you guys. So anyone that pre-orders a draft guide, we'll do a raffle for that out of those people. Maybe we'll pick like three people out of that. All right. So that is all. Go to Twitter. Go tweet at Zendaya. Show her this video. Maybe she needs help with her rookie drafts. I'd give her a discount. I'd give her a better discount than I'd give you guys. I'd only make her pay 15 bucks instead of 20 We put a lot of work, a lot of hours into that thing. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, you know, you could always tweet at us, email us. Let us know things that you want to see in the product in the upcoming weeks, months, or next year when we revamp the entire thing. Always open to feedback, obviously. Same thing with our content, of course, our editing style. You know, if you hate what Tony does, which I do, let him know in the comments. That's it. Love you. Hit the button. It looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I am the fuck out of you. Thank you.